thumb onto the controller and just gently move your thumb around and you see the, the controls. So right. The camera is aiming where the gun is pointing and then it'll carry out the engagement. Now, cameras on weapon systems are, are, aren't new per se. What's, what's this bringing you to the party? Well, it's a stabilised weapon system, um, which means it can go onto a vehicle. When the vehicle's going across country, it's stabilised on top. So where you're pointing is where it will remain pointing. My name is Wee Xiang. I'm the chief engineer responsible for the design of the Bronco. This is the third generation, uh, an evolution from the war top vehicle that went into service in Afghanistan. We have the latest iteration with improvements to the design. The front of the vehicle has a V-shaped hull. It gives much better protection to the crew sitting in the vehicle, so it's much lighter compared to the earlier version. We took out almost two tons of uh, weight uh, from the vehicle. It's like a four-wheel drive truck on tracks. So having very big contact patches on the ground, the tracks provide superior mobility in snow and uh, soft terrain. What we are trying to demonstrate here is the capacity of the rear. You can see that it actually can take up to 10 personnel in the back. For a troop carrier version, we, are, we have designed to match uh, 95 percentile requirement uh, of most uh, armed forces in the world. So this is an illustration of how many people you can sit. So you can see that uh, it's very spacious uh, compared to any other vehicle that's uh, possibly in this class. We have a full air-conditioned uh, system, both cooling and heating. So this vehicle would survive in the Arctic. We have uh, excellent mobility due to the wide tracks and we have fully qualified it for uh, mine protection. So this, these are the smoke grenade launchers where you can throw a smoke grenade and hide from view. The vehicle is also designed uh, to carry a remote weapon station or a main weapon station at the front. You can see that we actually have uh, situation awareness cameras at the front and also at the rear of the vehicle to allow the people operating the vehicle to, to see in all uh, lighting conditions. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, the Ajax family of vehicles. Ajax has got a turret on and it's a turret designed with our partners at Lockheed Martin and it's got a 40mm cased telescopic ammunition uh, cannon. It's a specialist kind of cannon. It's the first that the British Army has used and it's the same cannon uh, on the Warrior Upgrade Programme as well. So if you can imagine that turret on top of this vehicle um, yeah, with a 40mm CTA cannon and crucially because it's a reconnaissance vehicle it's got a whole range of sensors on it as well. So day-night cameras, thermal images, acoustic sensors and local situation awareness sensors as well that tell the crew who's operating around the vehicle. The really big investment in the vehicle is what's inside it. So everyone talks about the tracks and it's green and it's big and that's important but actually what's inside is the really key thing. We've invested something like uh, a million lines of software code in the vehicle and that's both the vehicle and the turret together. And what that's particularly doing is pulling together all the information that's from those sensors, fusing it and presenting it in a way that's meaningful to the crew inside. And with that amount of data, that's quite a tricky job. Once the crew have got that information in front of them, telling them about what's going on outside, giving them a picture of where the targets are and what they should be looking at, uh, the system then automatically decides what information it's then going to pass out to the communication systems so it can pass both data and imagery to both dismounts, other armoured vehicles, attack helicopters, fast jets that are coming over the top, or back to fires units that are behind. Last year, there was a big push on rubber track technology, and I think quite a few of us who had been in armour for years and years were very surprised at just what is deliverable with modern technology. And it's the same in, in many areas. So practitioners have a chance to see what's on the shelf, what's coming through in the next few years, 
and it helps us to define our requirements better.